Hi guys, and welcome to Live Review 20. Now, uh, before I get into it, apologies that we're uh, pretty much an hour and ten minutes late. Um, I went to the pub earlier this afternoon, thought I'd be coming back a few hours ago, but uh, we ended up uh, having a little bit of a darts tournament, so uh, that's why we're a little bit late. So apologies to anybody who was uh, waiting for the video to start. Uh, but before I get into it, Big, massive thank you to my co-host Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews who if not for him this episode wouldn't be happening because he kindly sent over both of the beers to review and uh, so before I get into it Dean thank you very much for these beers you're welcome mate you're and welcome. Uh, yeah hope you you're doing well looking forward to it mate looking forward to it very good two decent beers on the menu tonight I think I think so indeed, especially one which we're going to be saving yeah. for the end. But it, it's no surprise if you've seen the title in the description. Yeah. But uh, we're going to kick things off from, for me, one of the most reliable British craft breweries. Uh, I don't have, I don't even think I've had a beer that's like been enjoyable but missed the mark. It's always been like a really good, like I'd happily drink that beer again, sort of a fur. So going going over to Siren, and this is uh, the Santo del Frio. Apologies if I've mispronounced that, which is a dry hopped American lager, which was brewed in collaboration with Sante Ad and Dari. I'm not too sure how to pronounce that again. Apologies uh, for my mispronunciation. Yeah. yeah. It's very small on this label. Uh, but yeah, Sante Adrianus, or Adrius, uh, Rustic Ales. And uh, I think this was uh, part of the um, Rainbow Project of 2017, if I uh, yeah. remember correctly. So yeah. I would read to you the back of the label, but it's really quite hard to see because it's, as you can see, it's quite a busy label. And then the... Uh, Right, it's pretty damn small. I've got a magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, I, I'm having a job to say it, mate. Yeah, that's hurting my eyes. But I can read the ingredients. So the ingredients are water, malted barley, wheat, oats, hops, blue corn tortilla, and blue agave syrup, and of course yeast. And it's clocking in at 5% in a 330ml bottle with that classic uh, sort of siren artwork that they have. And that, of course, is the siren crown. So aside from this one today, did you manage to try any of the other uh, Rainbow Project beers from last year? Um, I think the Blue Sky Blue Sea, was that part of the Rainbow Project of 2016? I can't remember um i did have um, the rainbow project 2016 but i can't remember uh, two bees. i think it was yeah um and that was a pretty decent beer that was i've been going back a while now but um i think i enjoyed it, it was different anyway and i think that was a yeah i'm sure it was definitely part of the uh, rainbow project no, who, okay. who they, they were paired with i don't know yeah yeah, I do like the I like the concept of the Rainbow Project, but I don't know don't know why I didn't buy this year's box. Um, because they had some, from what I can remember, they had some really interesting breweries getting involved, and I, I, don't know, I like these sort of collaboration series that breweries do. I mean, I'd love to try the um, Sierra Nevada one. Um, which is like around the world or something like that. I can't can't remember. Yeah, but that was uh interesting from what I'd um, seen of people's reviews. But um, yeah, Siren. I, 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 there's no negative words I can give at all. Um, never had a bad beer. Never had a dull beer. It's always been pretty damn tasty. Yeah. I I think when I first started out reviewing, I I reviewed. Um, they did a collab, I think, with Evil Twin, 
and it was it was even even more Jesus, but it was uh, I think the barrel age, the, some sort of barrel age version of it. Can't quite remember. I think I enjoyed it, um, but it was, yeah. it was like one of my first reviews that I did. Um, so that's going back January 2016, something like that. I think. Um, and that was that was you know a phenomenal beer that was. But yeah, Siren, they're, they're just rock steady, aren't they, on what they do? Yeah. You know, the core beers are fantastic. Um, Little, little plug, I've actually got one uploading for tomorrow. <laughs> ah, very I did, nice. I did I did the sound wave. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what I've life. seen. That's available in some supermarkets now, isn't it, if I remember. That's the IPA or one of their IPAs. Yeah. 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 Nitros, I think I've got that from. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah, and as always, I'm always happy to see some of the craft breweries making it into the supermarkets. I know some people have issues with it, but you know, if if you've got an issue with it, you can always just buy direct from the brewery, I guess, or mm. buy from a shop that you find more suitable. But I don't know if it's getting breweries that you wouldn't expect, like access to a, an audience that would never have even have heard of them. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I don't think they'll lose too much money on those contracts, but I think it all helps at the end of the day. Yeah. And fair, fair play to, to supermarkets like Waitrose and, and M&S that are really championing these sort of, you know, craft brewers and, and getting their stuff on the shelves. And then the, the other big boys sort of follow suit, don't they? You know, it's it's good. Yep. I think Waitrose and M&S, well, maybe, probably Waitrose definitely were like the first supermarket to sort of I think so, yeah. get the wheels in motion for, for seeing new good beer on the shelves. For sure, yeah. Yeah. So, I've got mine open already. Yeah. And uh, let's see what we get on the pour. So I'm really quite interested to see what the uh, the blue tortilla and the agave gives to this one. Because I don't think I've actually seen any anyone really talk about the beer. Um, I mean, I'm sure they obviously have on YouTube and on various places on Facebook, but I don't think I've actually seen like a post about it. So going into this one quite blind. So yeah, it's, beer. yeah, it's definitely got that you know lager look to it, golden, mm. straw-like, but then a lovely sort of not too hazy. Yeah, a little murkiness about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah a little you can just about see for it, but yeah, very nice and golden. Has that ever so slight like lemon curd honey sort of look to it? Um, I didn't generate any head on mine pretty much. No, mine. I, I've got a little bit of a film on it, but that's that's gone now. Yeah. Just a couple of balls sitting on the top. Um, slow carbonation in mine. Yeah, little bubbles clinging to the side. Oh, yeah, it certainly looks good. It's it's very. I don't know. It's got that lemony look to it. If that mm. makes sense. Yeah, it's decent. We're getting That's a rhyme on it. Yes, indeed. That's a lovely smell, that. I get lemon lots sherbet of, sort of thing. Yeah, lemon sherbet. It's not too much of like a citric smell. It's got that sort of like rounded edge to it. I mean, you definitely get that sort of like a lager, molten yeast character coming through. Mm. So it's not it's not too overwhelmed by the hops on the the nose. Oh, it's a pretty sort of uniform sort of smell, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. not there's not uh, loads going on with it. There's like a a slight honey like sweetness which i'm guessing is the agave because i think that's like um that's used as like a replacement of sugar isn't it um yes. agave. so you, you do get that sort of like syrup uh not syrup that sweetness very sweet sort of though isn't it yeah it's yeah not too overbearing not sickly 
but yeah, I think that's a really nice smelling beer. I mean, the best before date on the bottle is 16th of the 8th, 2018. And it doesn't yeah. smell like it's got any fade to it. It's really quite, it's quite a vibrant smelling beer by all accounts. But yeah, it's, it's what you expect with like a dry hop lager, but there's like just very subtle hints of something that you don't usually get. Which I don't know if the the tortilla adds too much to the aroma, but there's it's definitely got that sort of like sweetness to it. I'm I'm going I'm going through the back. I'm I'm trying to <laughs> pick, uh, <laughs> pick it out. It's got bar barrel aged, which we aged in tequila barrels. Ah, okay. So yeah, about um, we drew the colour blue from this year's Rainbow Project and set to work out the challenge, keeping the barrel aging beer in mind for 2018. We decided to go entirely different route this time to brew a lager with our friends at San Sante Andreas or whatever it's called, and cemented cold. Um, the nah, my eyes are going on me, giving up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to keep up with you, but it's just it just seems like we're blending into one. Yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, it's barrel aged. Yeah, tequila barrels, interesting. I don't. Then I mean, of course, I did, I did. because you've said tequila, it has got that slight sort of tequila. A row to it. It's like, um, dare I say, it's got that sort of like Desperados. That's it. Yeah, Desperados. It. Yeah. 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 Yeah, actually, very much so. Um, it, it's weird, isn't it? When you, you, you only have to say one key word and then it all sort of, it, I don't know, it's weird. But yeah, yeah Desperados, it's, it's all sort of like coming in now and you're thinking, yeah. Tequila yeah, lager. That, that's what I'm smelling now is that like tequila lager mix. But it's a lovely smell of beer, it really, really is. Right, I think we should dive in on this thing, yeah. Yes, indeed. Cheers, mate. Cheers. And luckily, it's nothing like Desperados. <laughs> no, thank fuck, it's not like Desperados. <laughs> I tell you what, though, there's I a some I like weird, weird intake on this beer because as it was going in, got big hints of citrus, but then this like like bitterness came through almost straight away afterwards. I don't say like that. You get like an initial hit of like a sweet citrusy flavour. Then I'm, getting, that, I'm getting a really lemony, limey, sherbet sort of intake on that. Mm -hmm. um, nice, there's a nice level of sweetness in there, and yeah, that there, there is a little bit of bitterness on from there, and I'm getting that sort of because it was saying it's, it's, it's corn chips it's it's brewed with. Yeah, I'm getting that cor corny. Yeah, sort it's it's adjunct things in there. Yeah, but it's not like that sweet syrupy corn flavour. No, the mad drink no. lagers get, but it's not too far removed from that. It's it's like you know, I mean, it says uh, you know a, a dry hopped American lager, and and it's 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 sort of staying true to that, but it's sort of, of course, they they crafted it. Yeah, put their spin on it just to, just to jack it up a bit. Um, without sort of it taking over the style, really, you know. It's, yeah. I, I, I definitely still class it as a lager, for sure. Oh, yeah. and, um, it hasn't moved yeah. away from that. Yeah, that, that's that's the one thing that I'm really glad about, that it's not just about those hops. You sort of like get that hoppiness first, mm. but then it like subsides. And I don't know about you, but 
I can definitely get that tequila barrel style flavor on the back end, mixing mm. with that hoppy bitterness. Because I, I don't rarely drink spirits that often, and tequila is the last one that I'd want to drink on a regular basis because it always reminds me of one of those like nasty shots that someone just decides they'll buy you. You never really buy it yourself. It's always yeah. like, take a shot of this, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, and tequila, tequila, ouzo, that's another one as well. It's a bit hit and miss for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, work that stuff is. Oh, yeah. Um, I slightly get that with this beer. Um, did we say the ABV on this? Uh, I think it was 5%. Yeah, 5%. Yeah, so middle of the road, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting it. I mean, we we said on the nose, didn't we, that, that Desperado sort of thing. Um, more so on the nose, I think, than the taste. But I, I, yeah. I, I yeah, I do get that tequila thing in there. I think it's, it's yeah, it's definitely in there, but it's not sort of um, overbearing the beer, is it? Like what that Desperado, no, it, 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 the sweet it, mess, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't take anything away from the beer it just adds like this nice level of complexity to it because it's not just another dry hopped craft lager there are like flavors in there that it's one of those beers where i don't know about you but there are some flavors that i've tasted before but i can't really pick out too much like to say oh this is what it tastes like yeah so it's definitely I'd say it's one of those beers that's quite an acquired taste, um, to be fair. Mm, yeah, I'll go with that. It's a nice soft mouthfeel to it, isn't it? It isn't like quickly yeah. on the mouth. No. Not too um, thin either. Doesn't get watery or anything like that. No. It's just uh... Them flavours are quite... They're quite sharp in there, aren't they? Um, yeah. I mean that that lemon, that's that's pretty a pretty standout sort of thing for me on there. Um and yeah, that that agave it, it yeah, it's, it's some sort of like honey substitute, you know, yeah. like that. Is that or, I think yeah. I've had it in a beer before. I think so. I think I've had like one of the what a soft drink that's used there, like an energy drink. Well it's not really putting any flavour into the beer. But you do get that like sweetness. That's not like a sugary sweetness. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's it's an intriguing one for sure. Mm. It's. I think it's a pretty decent beer, to be honest with you, and. Yeah. and I don't know if Siren have ever sort of uh, dabbled with loggers before. They probably have in the past, but not not to my knowledge anyway. They're normally, you know, craft breweries like like them sort of when when they sort of venture into sort of doing loggers, it, it can be either excellent or a complete disaster, can't it? And I think yeah, this this collab that they've done, I, I think. I think it's a decent beer. Yeah, it's. Um... Yeah, I think it's 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 intriguing, but it's solid at the same time. Um, it's mm. definitely. I don't know if I could drink more than a couple in a like a session because it just has those flavors that come through a little bit. Mm. Yeah, it's it's quite rich, isn't it, for a lager? Yeah, but maybe because of the ingredients that they've used opposed to sort of a normal sort of chewable adjunct American lager, which you could just drink and drink and drink, you know, yep. and not know that you're drinking it almost. Um, I'd, I'd, probably have, I'd probably have another one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd yeah. happily have another bottle of this. Or, or even like pint, a half a pint. A pint. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's got that sort of character. I mean, I know you could drink any beer any time of the year, really, but it's got that sort of like, summer vibe to it well i don't know about you but i chilled mine down slightly yeah mine was in the the fridge uh took it out about 
20, 20 minutes before we went on air. Okay. But there's there's like yeah, no okay. flavors masked or anything like. I'm guessing a lot of those flavors are still coming through quite boldly. Mm. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I'm really quite satisfied with this one actually. Yeah, I think it it, um, it fits into to the 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 way that we're going with this with this hangout as well. Isn't it? It's a nice start to be, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really quite impressive that actually, because uh, it it does what I think a lager should do. Uh, well, a craft lager, it it's fundamentally a lager. You can tell that it's not. Like one of these, like watered down tasting pale ales, which some hoppy lagers can be, and yeah. it's got these like slight nuances about it, but it just works. It, there's nothing out of place with it, and you know to brew with those sorts of ingredients in something like a lager and to barrel age it in tequila, it, there's I'd, I'd imagine there's there's a hell of a lot that could have gone wrong with a beer like that. Yeah, there's there's nothing um, there's nothing awkward about it for me. It's yeah. got that, it, it, and it's and it still tastes like a lager, but just just wrapped up slightly, but not overboard. So I'm quite happy with that actually. You know, they have they haven't ruined it because you still get that sort of cool lager taste. But if that makes sense, you know, yeah, yeah, they haven't wrecked it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. They haven't wrecked it. Yeah, and I think the the guys that they brewed with are out of California, if I remember properly. So yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'd definitely be interested yeah, to try cool, something yeah. from the uh, Sante. A, a dive. A, 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 I'm not I'm not even going to offend anyone by mispronunci mispronunciating it. Rusty Chaos. Let's call it Rusty Chaos. Yeah, the rustic ales. I'd happily try more of their beers if they make their way to the UK. Because I'd never heard of the brew before. Um, no, I, I haven't looked up this bottle. And I mean, like it says, like it says on on the label, you know, the Mexican Mexican influence. So you know, straight away, you, you know, tortilla, uh, tortilla yeah. chips, which they, you know, they tick the box for that. Tequila, obviously. They, for that so yeah a pretty decent effort really i think from siren and um rustic ales what, what yeah. would you give it rating wise then mate uh rating wise i think i'm gonna give this one a just like a good seven out of ten uh, it's one that yeah. i would buy again um but that being said, I think there are flavors in there that some people would drink this and be like oh what's this what what's going on here but it's, yeah. it's far from a dull beer, um, that's for sure. It's, it's nowhere, nowhere near boring or anything like that. It's, it's got a lot of character to it. It's nice to have something a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. What about yeah, you, mate? I'll go, I'll go 7 out of 10 as well, mate. Yeah. Know. Yeah, very nice indeed. So uh, if anybody's watching this and you come across a bottle of this one, definitely give it a go, even if you're not a big fan of lagers, because I think it's got something to it that will appeal to that sort of audience. And even if you do like lagers, I think there's something, you know, nice little changes to it um, and its own little personality. And, uh, yeah. So that was the... Uh, Santo del Frio, dry hopped American lager from Siren and uh, Rustic Ales out of California, of course. Got the name and the title and all their links down below if you want to check them out for yourselves. So I'd say we're off to a, we're off to a good start so far. Hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, like I say, it's just a nice little, just, just slip into it sort of beer. I think it, if, 
whether you're, you're drinking two beers, three beers, or bloody ten beers, um, I think I I would always start on a log, you know, just to sort of like yeah. get into it, you know, and, and just work your way up, don't you, or, or interchange, light, dark, light, dark, you know. But yeah. Definitely, yeah. Solid, you know. And it just goes to show you that, you know, the, the style itself might get some stigma, but you could do a lot with the style. Um, there's a lot you could do with a lager and the process of lagering a beer. Are and you going to take a look at uh, scores at the doors on the uh, platform? Uh, I'll see if I could quickly get that mm-hmm. up and then I'll check the comments. Tell you what, I'll just look at Untapped because they're the only ones that I uh, really trust. Because it's got to that point now with rate beer and beer advocate where it's almost not worth looking at what they say, if that makes if sense. If you've got lager in the title, then it's doomed on rate beer straight away, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think they give any look to any lager on, on there. No. It's almost you don't like, like a. The word. Yeah, it's like a dirty this, word this for them, isn't it? Really. Because there are some decent markers out there, it's just you've got to you've got to just take it for what it is. Yeah, I mean, don't get wrong, you've you've got to go through a lot of shit before you find like a really really good one. But they are out there if you yeah. actually look. Even some of the the big macro ones. I've got you to thank for introducing me to uh, Augustina Lagerbeer anyway, mate. Oh, yeah, that, that's just... <laughs> oh, that, that's... I mean, I don't drink lagers for big flavour or anything like that, but for a lager, I think that's got such a... just a solid... everything yeah. about it for me. It, it just just ticks all the boxes. Mm. So, according to Untapped, which classes this as an Indian pale lager, which I'd stand by because it's definitely got that oh, that slight hoppiness to it without yeah. being too hoppy and uh, they gave this on average 3.55 out of 5 and that's from 1306 ratings so not bad and let's see what rate beer says So out of 49 ratings, is that? Yeah, no, 43 ratings. Overall, 69. Not too bad. Surprisingly high. And 40, 49 for style, which I can, I can sort of understand that score more than the overall one. Because like it, it is really qu- a little bit too unique for it to be pigeonholed into one style, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely. Then, yeah, we've messed about with it, but, but in a good way, I think. You know. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing in there that shouldn't be, I think, taste-wise for me, for me anyway. You know. Yeah, yeah. But, I'd, yeah I'd stand by that one. And according to Beer Advocate, this got a three point eight out of five. So, actually, quite quite well scored. So I'll quickly read the comments and then we'll get on to the, uh, the main <coughs> beer of the show, which I'm very, very excited to try. This, yeah. So our good friend Ozzy Brew says, I will watch. I think that was uh, posted before we went live. So I appreciate that, my friend, if you're watching live or if you're watching the uh, rerun. And then our other good friend, Craig from Kent Beer Reviews, Wrote, just popped out for a few, back soon. Have a great review. We'll watch the rerun. Currently drinking Lervig Tasty Juice, double dry hopped mm. Citra IPA. Now that sounds good. Yeah, Lervig, they're shit up, aren't they? they are. Yeah, they're, they're just a fantastic brewery. Uh, then a person who I've not seen on the tubes for a while, but I think he uploaded fairly recently. A good friend Terry from Terry's Quick Beer Reviews. 
Oh, Terry's in the house. Yeah. Always great to hear from Terry. Absolute legend hello, in the community. And he says, hello, guys, with a thumbs up and a smile. Hello, Baxa. Hope you're doing well. Um, and, yeah, hope I look forward to potentially seeing more reviews in the yeah. future because I've, I've genuinely missed watching Terry's he's, reviews. He's, he's, a, he's a quality guy. He is true, honest, oh, yeah. straightforward. He, he, he gets beers that people can get hold of quite easy. Um, yeah, top guy. You've been missed, Tal. You Keep have indeed, making them videos, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we need to see that little shed you've got. We need to see how you've uh, changed it up since last time because it was looking good. So uh, we've also got comments from Chris from On The Tenth over in Canada. How are you doing, my friend? He says, hello. It would have tasted better if you guys cleansed your palates first with some pickles. <laughs> Always got to get that back. Mr. Peter's reference in there. Oh, it's yeah. Happen. The legend that is. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, another good friend of ours, Average Joe. Oh. How you doing, Joe? Hope you're doing well. Drinking all those hazy New York IPAs. I tell you what, some of those beers that are coming out of New York, that, like, that area of America just look absolutely fantastic. Crazy. And uh, he uh, adds to Chris's comment, garlic dill pickles, to be precise. Cool. And then there's a little bit of back and forth between him and Chris. And then Ozzy Bruce says, hi, guys. Thank you for actually watching as we're live, even though you, you came on before we went live. Uh, again, I apologize for the uh, delay. I got um, wrapped up in a mini darts tournament, oh, which I'm usually... Yeah. I'm usually fucking awful at darts. But it just like, I wasn't great today or anything, but I just turned it on. So, you know, what would have been like a couple of hours turned into a few more because, oh shit, he's actually playing well. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, no, nobody's got to worry about ever being in a darts match with me anytime soon. So that's uh, all okay. It's been mild. Mate, they stay yeah, those mark, yeah. set me up they get me yeah. to where I need to go just tunnel, tunnel vision on that on that door mate. oh That's yes it, oh yes <laughs> and uh, Average Joe says miss this live but we'll watch the replay um, and oh. on the 10th Chris says another beer is coming up so uh, look out for that Joe um, I'm sure you'll have things to say about the, the beer that we're going to be review, reviewing next. And then uh, Aussie Brew wrote, were you playing Michael Van Gogh? And, uh, not today. No, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't make it down to a sunny old Scalmersdale for a couple of hours of darts, which is, it's a real shame. And uh, yeah, Chris says 180. So on that note, I think it's about time we opened up the star of the show and again Indeed. said at the start of the video and i've said it to dean plenty of times but a massive massive thank you for sending over a can of this my way and and of course the siren you know you always got a dependable beer when it's siren but the next beer is evil twin brewings even more jesus which, of course, is a stout clocking in at 12% ABV in a 500 mil can, which, you know, if you put it in 500, I'm going to love you even more. Uh, I, love, I love to see craft breweries put in like 500 mils or, you know, it doesn't have to be a 660 or 750, but... 500 like, is just yeah. the perfect sort of amount of liquid, isn't it? Oh, yes, definitely. Especially for this sort of beer as well. 12% oh, yeah. in a final email. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm sure pretty much everyone watching this live or after the fact knows, at least knows of this beer. You know, it has quite a reputation. And of course, there have been so many variations of it and special edition versions of it since it was first brewed. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. Very, very excited. And I think this is actually 
not only the first evil twin beer that I'm reviewing, but I think it's the first evil twin beer that I've actually drank, uh, to be honest. Um, the, the one thing about evil twin is a lot of their stuff, or a lot of his stuff, because I think it's mainly one guy, uh, the brother from um, Mikkel from Mikella. Uh, yeah. It, it commands a high price a lot of the time, which I can see a lot of people being put off by, mm. especially with what we have available in the UK. And uh, I was talking to Dean before we came on, came on Earth. This is one of those beers that I've seen so many times in so many different bottle shops, but you've never pulled the trigger for whatever reason. Yeah. I was uh, exactly, Exact same opinion, mate. Um, Beer Gonzo was the, um, the point where these were, were purchased, and I, I go in there quite a bit. I go in there as often as I can, maybe three or four times a month, if, yeah. if I can, and if money persists, you know. Um, and I've, I've walked past it. I've, I've even picked it up several times and ummed and odd and ummed and odd, and but it's always gone back on the shelf, but. With us, you know, with this like twentieth review coming up, um, the last time I went there, I thought, no, nah, fuck it, two cans, boom, have it, there you go, <laughs> one made up, um, because it it's well, I'm I'm just hoping, I, I think it will deliver, but it, yeah. it's, it's going to be a monumental beer as well, and and I'm glad to be drinking with you, mate, you know, yeah, and it it. I, I can't think of a a more fitting beer to uh, tackle review twenty with. Uh, to be honest, um, you know it's got to have a reputation, and uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter what it would be. The fact that you know I'm sharing this beer with a good friend of mine, and of course you guys watching this as we're doing it. That that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, you know, it, it, there's just something. I don't know, I just love stuff like that. And um yeah, again, Dean, massive, massive thank you for for sending this my way. And no um let's quickly read you what it says on the can because it's actually you can actually read it on this label. Yeah. Uh so a few times in hi in the history of craft beer, it has happened that a highly praised beer rises beyond mortal stardom into a higher godly league. Usually the recipe to make such heavenly drops is thick, fudge-like body, pitch black colour, amazingly overwhelming aromas of chocolate, coffee, dark fruits and muscovado sugar. Obviously only made in limited amounts and most crucial of all, it must taste rare. So, um, yeah. That's it all partially, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. That's uh, quite a write-up. So, obviously, brewed by Evil Twin in uh, Stratford, Connecticut, I think CT is in the premises there, because I think Evil Twin is primarily a like vagabond or a gypsy style brewer. Yeah. And distributed by 12% LLC in Brooklyn, New York. So, um, yeah, I think there's uh, enough talking. Because I think we've got the the second coming uh, to uh, be getting on with. So let's get hopefully, this. Hopefully, we won't crucify it. Here's to hoping. I'll tell you what, I'm loving this already because the can is pretty much filled to oh, the brim. Yeah, to the top, man. Yeah. Oh, let's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Oh, my God, look at that glug. Wow. It's like engine oil, isn't it? On the pole. Yeah, yeah, it's like an oil slick. Right. Wow. Jesus Christ, look at that. That, to me, is pretty much jet black. Yeah, jet black all day long. 
The time's yeah. not the, the, the head's not that far off, is it really? Oh no, Real no, dark. that is a very dark brown. Oh, it's got that sort of like chocolate milk look to it. Yeah. I haven't got much of a head on mine, just a, a finger is yeah. that, but it's um, quite vibrant. Yep. It's got that like, sort of like black coffee <laughs> look to it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it just looks absolutely fantastic. It really, really does. It's amazing how you can get like that with a beer. When you, you know, a beer poured into a glass can just be like, Jesus, look at that. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can get a nose on this one. Wow. Oh, come on. Where'd you start, mate? <laughs> That's just like, to me, that is like pure chocolate cake. Yeah, luxury, fudgy. Yeah, gooey chocolate yeah, cake just, with booze splashed all over yeah, it. Yeah, sticky. You get that slight booze in this, but I tell you what, for a, a is it twelve percent? You're not getting the twelve percent smell off this beer. They have I'm, masked I'm just that a, a, so nicely. A, a, little, a little bit of vineness, you know, a slight not not intense booze in this, but just like those sort of like. What you what you get, you know, that one of the mill sort of vineness whip to it. But yeah, yeah. that 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 yeah. chocolate cake stuff in there. Oh wow. Again, my nose my nose keeps dipping into it, but yeah, it that's like like really dense chocolate sponge. Smell, <laughs> dense chocolate sponge with like loads of like milk chocolate just coating the the rest of the cake. And then of course you get like about sort of like um it's like sweet spices in there as well, but not too much. There's like a very subtle sort of like milky coffee aroma, so it's not too harsh yeah. in terms of there's no harshness milky. at all in this beer. It's literally like you've just taken out like Chocolate fudge out of the the oven or something like that. The brownies, chocolate brownies. Brownies, that's what, yeah. Brownie, yeah. That's like fresh chocolate brownies out of the oven. That is amazing. I mean, I've got, I've still got that sort of compact half a finger of head, but it's it's just like sticking itself to the to the side of the glass, and it's even though it's only a small head, it's Packed really nice. It looks really sort of creamy and smooth. Yeah, and it's just and the, like lovely. Inviting. Yeah, lovely like layer on the glass when you swirl it round. Oh, it just smells yeah, fantastic. Like I think we should jump in, mate. Yeah, I think we should because we yeah, could spend should. we could spend like half an hour talking about the smell. Yeah. It is. Nice one, mate. I do not get 12% APV on this fucking beer. That is just... Oh, what a thick mouthfeel to it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like chocolate syrup. That's absolutely lovely. That's, That's so fucking good. I get that muscovado sugar in there. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, a, a, a lovely amp of sweetness to it. And then and shitloads of chocolate in there, in there. There's dark, there's milk, yeah. there's yeah. bitter. Yeah, a bit like the cocoa powder, fucking mm. melted chocolate, like chocolate sponge. And that, and that pudgy stickiness. Yeah. Little bit, maybe a little bit of uh, espresso coffee. Yeah, that's for. I think it's more, more of the milkier coffee on the nose, but taste-wise, yeah. I think it's more of a yeah. bitter espresso. Yeah, yeah, like a, a like a shot of coffee. Mm. 
or that mm. sort of like um, I can never remember what it's called, but that like coffee syrup that you can camp get. Coffee. Camp coffee. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you've you've dipped your finger in it. Not too intense though. Um, no. Just like the nose, there's really no Ooh. harshness whatsoever on this beer. That is, yeah, oh, wow, wow. That's I feel bad now for passing it by all them months the yep. previous. Yeah. You just think, oh, it's an old beer. It's, you know, you, you get, I, sometimes, I think sometimes you get sucked into sort of the new stuff that's out, the new releases when you go to bottle shops and stuff, and this stuff gets put to the back burner, and I think it's completely criminal, really, because it's a, it's a fucking legend of a beer. Oh. I mean, we're, we're at that point now with um, a lot of the Imperial Stouts where they're putting, they're literally putting like flavorings and artificial flavors into them, which, you know, I'm all for because you can get some absolutely just mind blowing mm. results. But this to me, it's, it's still got that, yeah. like, that old school feel to it. Classic. Yeah. Russian Imperial Stout, you know, it's. Yeah, yeah. Core flavors in there, isn't there? There's, 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 there's no sort of um, nothing that shouldn't be in there, uh, you know. When it like sort of remains true to the style, sort of thing, it's it's original. But glorious. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm not getting any like synthetic flavors in there. There's nothing too overwhelming in any regard. It's so it's almost like really robust beers, but it's balanced so nicely at the same time. And it's one of those ones that even at twelve percent, it's one of those ones where like you're just taking sip after sip because it's just really, really good. Moorish. Yeah. yeah, very Moorish. Completely Moorish. Yeah. If you this is one of my favourite styles of beer. Oh yeah, for damn sure. And it's the only the only good thing about winter time, really, because I, I know I know and I know a lot of the American guys. You know, they drink imperial stouts all year round and, and fair play. But I just I just I don't know. I I don't quite get it in the summer months. It's yeah. not a beer. I would try one, but it's not a beer that I would, like sort of go automatically to in, in the in the sticky summer months of, of the UK. But winter time, it just it's just so rewarding to have, isn't it? You know, in the cold nights and everything, it's great. Yeah, that's just I don't it's one of those beers that it's actually quite hard to review because you just can't really put into words just how satisfying the experience is overall. And like I was saying, the style itself has come leaps and bounds since this was first brewed. But it just, I just want, I'm happy to have more beers like this that are like old school in the style that just showcase what the style can be. And, you know. It's like the ball rolling, didn't it, for all these yeah, other, other yeah. beers that followed and, and yeah. the offshoots of the actual, you know, beer in yeah. the brewery. And it's like, you can, um, you, can, you can see why they've done so much with this beer, this base beer that they've got. Base beer. Yeah, they've got they've got the perfect platform, haven't they? They've, yeah. they've got everything right with the base beer. So let's let's put a drop of this in it. Let's put a bit of that. Let's send it in that direction. Let's send it in this direction, and it works because you've got the you've got the you know the groundwork's already been done, hasn't it? Yeah. It's just t tinkering with it here and there on on these on these special releases that they've done, which I'm very intrigued to be trying now after after trying this for the, for the first time oh yeah yeah i'm definitely going to be next time i see a, a can or a bottle and i'm buying beer i'm like yeah i could get two or three different beers for the price that some of these beers charge but i'm like i'll, I'll get I'll, I'll get a can of this I'll, i'm happy to uh yeah. and i think um from what i remember it was about from what I remember seeing it in shops, it was always between seven to ten pounds or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I know. Seven to ten pounds. 
seven 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 eighty five or seven ninety five per can. Which yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to swallow that you know yeah. some some beers. It's not every day that you do that, but every you know, it's it's that sort of you've got you've got to be in that mindset of thinking, well, I don't do that. I don't and I don't make a habit of doing that. I have to be right in the mood or yeah. a, 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 like you know, yeah. a special occasion to justify doing something like that. Um so yeah, I think it, it, it's like everything in life, isn't it? Now and again you've got to sort of treat yourself, you know, these, these little luxuries and stuff like that, little hidden gems. And it's paid off, I think. I think I, you know, yeah, that, I've that's got no complaints whatsoever with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there was always that risk that we'd overhype this beer before we got into it. But to me, I, I can't, I can't, I don't, I just can't pick out any faults. There's, there's nothing wrong at all with this beer. Mm. It's I mean, complex, isn't it? yeah. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so surprised at how this beer's held up with the way the um, the the markets become. And I think it just goes to show that there's still a place for these like pretty much classic brewed examples of the style. Yeah, it's it's a craft, it's a craft classic, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Even like that, that like slight, like black forest gatto flavor you get on the back end, because you do. It's like that sort of like vinous character that you were getting before. You do get that mm. slight fruit, like dark fruit character. Dark fruit, dark fruit vinous. Yeah. yeah, like black grapes. Like yeah, black breeze. It's it's got. Yeah, so it's got it's got so much going on with it. From from what I, I mean, the standout flavors for me is that 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 sugar thing because you're like muscovado molasses yeah. sort of sugar yeah. thing. Now yeah. that that's a kind of standout flavor for me. Um, the rich fineness to it, the, the fudgy dark milk chocolate thing in there. Um, a little bit of sort of like brandy boozy sort of thing to it, but not yeah. too much. Yeah. Yeah, that, that like sort of like fortified wine character. Yeah, yeah. Like that's like sherry, like almost like a, a dry sherry tone to mm. it. But yeah. it, it's like that's just like one part of the the whole puzzle. There's like really no, maybe aside from like the roastiness, there's nothing else that's really like like constant in your face all the time with it. No, it's yeah. There's, yeah. there's loads. I mean, I'd, I'd love to to see like a, a proper, you know, a proper beer concert sort of break this beer down. And, and, oh yeah. And pull absolutely everything out of it because there's so much going on with it. It's it's yeah. remarkable. It's one of those beers where every sip you take of it, you're thinking of something else, or you pick up something else. Yeah. It reminds you of something else. Because I'm like getting like slight char characters to it. There's like this like um, like salted licorice aspect as well, because it's got these sort of like very subtle earthy savory tones. But again, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't like intrude on the flavors that you're enjoying on that sip. Because I'm even getting like that that sort of like almost like Worcestershire sauce. Or soy sauce character, but without like the saltiness that you get with those yeah. flavors. There's like this like really yeah. nice, like sort of spicy earthiness to it. But then you take another sip and you get a bit more of that like chocolate. But it's not just one mm-hmm. sort of chocolate. It's got like a blend of like a milk chocolate and then like uh, a baker's chocolate or like an eighty percent. It's just layers, layers, layers of different sort of chocolate. Yeah. And the fact that they're still brewing this beer, um, it's just a, it's just a classic. It's one of those ones I think everyone should try. Mm. I mean, 
I'd say that with every beer because you should give every beer a go just to help develop your own palate. But this is one of those ones where it's like there's no reason not to give this a go. It, whether it's a bottle share, whether it's you know being gifted as a friend, or if you you decide you know what I'm going to pick that up from the bottle shop this time. Yeah, but that's quite perfect. With with it with it being in a a, a bond with no can perfect sort of bottle share beer isn't it you know oh yeah and, and that, that iabv as well you, you know you, you, could, you could quite easily break break it up and and get a get a good experience out of it you know if you were doing like say a, a bottle share with, with two two or three people maybe you know you'd get enough of the beer to sort of fall in love with it almost yeah but yeah it's really got me interested to see how they could potentially make this even better than it is by adding you know different processes and different ingredients to it because as it is i can't think of any way i'd want to change this beer and i've not actually tasted like an imperial stout like this for such a long time because it's it's just got that like classic like you say, Russian imperial stout character to it. Because it, it's like one of those things where the, there's nothing like really unique to it. There's nothing like, oh, it, like it, it, experimental it's about like, it. It's um, just... <clears throat> I mean, the, there's, there's probably people out there that have you know, imperial stout. Uh, I don't know, what, what, what would you say on that, mate? Is it a game-changing imperial style? Um, I'll say this. I can imagine when this was like first brewed, or at least two to three batches after it's initially brewed, I could imagine this changing... Yeah, I could imagine this like changing, like blowing people's minds when it came out. But I think we've come such a long way with craft beer in such a short amount of time that you know you will get the people who say oh well it's nothing compared to this blah 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 yeah, blah, it's blah, had, blah. It's had its day, yeah yeah but to me as someone who's who loved i love the adjunct imperial stouts i love it when they put these flavors in there and do these weird and wonderful things with but it's always great to taste like classic well done examples of the style so I think this, I think this is definitely stands up with what's available right now. And I, think, I think that's where they're still, you know, such, most, most bottle shops, most good, reputable bottle shops, and and I have to say beer Gonzo because that that's my local bottle shop to me, and, and you know, fantastic um, setup, fantastic staff in there. Um, that's why they, they these guys stop these sort of beers because it, it's it's got a it make it's you know when you when you open it when you drink it all right we've had it for the first time um, there might be guys out there that repeatedly drunk it and it, it's 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 just a fantastic experience it's true to everything original really isn't it yeah and it hasn't been played about with okay the, the, like we said there's there's offshoots of, of this actual beer where they've used you know adjuncts and, and glammed it up may probably made it even better i don't know but one day we might find out but um it's just it's just fucking amazing i'm made up by it mate. I yeah, really I'm, am. I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon with this beer um it, 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 I'd, I'd happily have this beer again multiple times um the, the only thing that i probably Let's say if I went to into a bottle shop tomorrow and I saw this with like um, one of the like variables of it, the only thing that would stop me buying this is if like the like even more cocoa Jesus was like maybe a pound more expensive. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what we're talking about. That like tiny little variable that would stop me from getting this beer again, but. Like I was saying, I've not had just a good, honest, 
like strong imperial stout for quite a while and this is just delivering on every aspect for me you know it doesn't always have to be you know flavor of the month sort of things it doesn't always have to be well look what we've done with this beer we've like added hazelnut flavorings and like rocky like rocky mountain road or mud cake pie flavors and stuff that that's beautiful don't get me wrong when you you when you incorporate those flavors right you can take a an imperial style yeah. and you can just elevate it to something insane yeah and and you and you and equally you get you get a fantastic experience from from that particular beer so this this is just you know this, this is this is but this is the basics isn't it and yeah if we're you know if we're linking up all these other series of beers that this brewery has done with, with regards to adjuncts this is the you know, the beginning and i mean I, I don't know i'm interested to know the name and everything because that seems unusual doesn't it yeah i'd like to say the thought process behind the uh label of this beer yeah. but then again don't, don't they're evil quite, they're quite old anyway aren't they with their, yeah. with their beer statements yeah i mean the, i mean what's that ipa that they did i've been more close was it i i've been felt more closer to ipa than i did people was... something like that and they, they had that um i think it was the start where it was like Sat in a hotel room on New Year's Eve in New York. Or oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like that tells me nothing about the beer itself, but yeah. I'm I'm infinitely more intrigued because you've actually named a beer like that. Yeah, Christmas Eve, at, Christmas Eve at a New York hotel room. Yeah, yeah, yeah Christmas. Yeah. It's like what is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, so you're going to pick it up and you'll turn it around and you go, oh, it's this sort of beer. Yeah, I'll, I'll put that in my uh, shopping cart. Yeah. But, um, just, yeah. I, 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 just, I, I love the, the imagination of it, though. And, 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 and the, some of the, the, I mean, the craft cans, the graphics that they put on it, it's just so far out. It's, you know, you're so intrigued by it. It's, is this a beer or is this like a, a joke, you know? Yeah, it's that over the top, but so so good at how it's how it's done, you know. It's, and then we've got like beers like Marston's, you know, Pedigree. Yeah, Pedigree, Old Pedigree, Roger. Pedigree beer. Yeah, let's you know, it's not rock the boat. Oh, yeah, but uh, I, t- I tell you what, the, the between the two of them, uh, Mikel and I think it's is his name Yepper, who's um, the guy behind Evil Twin. But they've got a good corner of the craft beer market with their two brands. Yeah. Hey, I tell you what, that, that family name's not gonna not gonna suffer in the long run. I mean, you, you, you said on your video, mate, the other day about wanting to see a caliber in, in the UK. I wish that would happen. You know? Yeah, that, that, that just blow my mind. Um, I, I they're, mean, they're I, Belt and stuff yeah, I mean, I've I've pretty much mentioned it every time I do a Mikel appear on the review, but but those boxes I get, I've I've never been disappointed, and that was like my first, yeah, you know, this has been my really like first experience with Mikel. So to have all of these beers and they all like hit the target, some higher than others. It, it just goes to show you if one brewery is capable of doing that when they release so many beers each year, it just it just it just goes to show that I don't think if people keep going on about oh the bubble's going to burst at some point. Yeah, I don't think it will. I I think we're at that point now of craft beer that there are even though uh, like like I, like I've said in the the videos that I've done recently. The beer reviews themselves on YouTube, very niche market, but there are so many people who don't actually follow like beer review channels and stuff who consume craft beer on more than just like, they they take it like to the next level. It's like 
this is what I'm all about now. Every week I'm going to like pay this much to buy these bottles and stuff. So I think craft beer has become such a big market now that there's no way the bubble's going to burst. It doesn't matter how many breweries AB and Bev buys or how many deals go on behind the scenes and stuff. Because for every like buyout, there's like literally hundreds of breweries who are going to pop up. Yeah. It, it, it's snowballing, isn't it? The, 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 yeah. These, these new breweries are popping up everywhere. And it's not just this country. It's it's more or less all over the planet, isn't it? You know, I know, I know Rod, he, he's mentioned it quite a few times in America. You know, these new breweries popping up just out of nowhere and just making some absolutely fantastic stuff. You know, they just come from nowhere. Yeah. And they're pouring out some really, you know, vibrant looking double IPAs and stuff like that. Great, great artwork and stuff. And, and the beer stands up quite well. And it's, it's happening everywhere. I think it's pretty brilliant. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. No matter where I go, where there's it's beer. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever go to a shop where I'm like, yeah, I've had all the beers in this shop or I've had all the beers in this supermarket. It'll never get to that point. You know, that, that, that day won't come for anybody. No, it's like if I've, if I've literally run out of beer in my house to review on my YouTube, I know for a fact that for, I'd say at least 12 quid, I've got like eight new bottles of beer to try that i've never had before just from a supermarket and if i wanted to spend a little more because of all the influx of different breweries domestically and internationally i know that you know my local bottle shop is about uh, you know, i have to get the bus to it but you know it's it's the neighboring town and it's like yeah i know even if i was to go to that bottle shop every week I would see so much rotation, and it's like there's there's uh, it, when people complain about the state of the the industry, and I'm like, come on, it's like you've the only way you're going to stop yourself from trying beers is from your own bias, mm. and that's why I'm I, I don't get this whole like negative attitude towards like supermarket beers. Because it's like, yeah, okay, you're not going to get like the most unique or out of this world stuff there. But I can like name five beers from a supermarket that you're actually going to genuinely enjoy if you don't put this like bias or pretense before your purchase. And it's yeah, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, uh, this everything's. Everything's got a purpose, whether yeah. it's beer or whatever. It's all it's all got a purpose, doesn't it? And you, you can you can go to McDonald's and and you know quick fix. You know what you're getting, yeah. cheap. You know, you know, bang it up, bold out quick. Or you can go to you know, I don't know, someone like Byron Burgers, where it's crafted more. You pay yeah. a bit more, yeah. get a bit more. The quality's better. It's, that's what that's what it's all about. You've got you've got the preference, you've got the choice. I like going down both avenues myself. Yeah, yeah. But this is a time and place where I'm proper in the mood. It's like a a double sausage and egg McMuffin. When you when you're in the mood for a double sausage and egg McMuffin, nothing else you will satisfy you. you. Cannot you eat that. Yeah. But at the same time, I know if I wanted to have like a, a twenty pound burger. I'd be like, I know a place where I can get a really good twenty-pound burger. So I don't know. The, the the beer landscape for me personally is just absolutely fantastic as it is, and uh, I can only see it getting better. Yeah. yeah. And you know, whether it's buying four packs of Elvis juice from a supermarket or coming across a damn good Imperial Stout in a bottle shop, I know that. I'm never going to be like, oh, I just don't know what to buy now. There's nothing for me to pick up anymore. That, that day will never come, mate. Right? Never. No, no. Choice, choice galore. Yeah. The golden age, isn't it? You know, the golden age. 
we're, we're so lucky to be sort of in it at the moment, you know. You know, people used to go on about the swinging sixes and stuff regarding sort of like the the, the music and the, and the culture and the atmosphere and stuff. I mean, we're, we're actually living in the, the golden age of like sort of beautiful beer, aren't we? You know? Oh yeah. yeah. We've never had we've never we've never had so much good stuff going on in one sort of sitting. It's unbelievable. Total respect. Yeah. And it, it it's just great to see that a beer like this still stands the test of time. Scores on the doors. Scores on the doors. Uh, for me personally, uh, I think the only thing that's working against this beer is just the sheer range of beers like this that you can get now. So th- there's no like points against the beer itself or the the brewing process or the brewery but just for sheer range and the fact that nearly everyone does a, an imperial stout i'm still going to give this like a an 8.5 9 out of 10 um, it's just such a beautifully brewed simple classic take on the style and uh yeah just a, a great base beer to work with and play around with and we can clearly see that they've done that and it, it's one that i would happily happily drink again in the future i'd I'd give it a nine out of ten yeah um of course you know if i'm, if I'm completely honest the price isn't that attractive yeah, pr- yeah price does work against a beer like this yeah um, maybe that's yeah, hype attached to that sort of, sort of uh, you know commanding that sort of price, but uh, yeah, it, I mean it's, it's it's a fantastic beer. It's been a great experience drinking it. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, mm. But yeah, that that it, it's in the back of my head that price, but. Like I said, you know, sometimes you have to sort of splash out now and again. You don't make a habit of it. So, yeah. yeah. Good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I could not agree more. And uh, the, the, the great thing about it is I'm happily going to try the other versions of this beer um, in the future at some point. And uh, do you know what? It, for, for my first experience of Evil Twin, I can't think of a much better impression that a brewery could potentially give me than after drinking this beer. But of course, you can't really say that unless you've like tried like a lighter beer that they've done, like an IPA or a that sort of thing. Because I yeah. always like to when when I get when I find a new brewery, I always like to see what they can do in terms of like the lighter beers. Like the pale ales, IPAs, lagers, saisons, and then how they like approach like porters, stouts, um, like f- like Flemish sours or whatever, like the darker mm-hmm. beers. But um, yeah, I think Evil Twin, they're always a brewery that, even though I've not tried any of their beers up to this point, they're always going to be a brewery that I'm going to at least try their beers. But like you were saying, the price on some of their beers can be just a little bit too. Yeah. It's like, a bit... Uh... I mean, yeah, I... it's around about just, just shy of eight quid. For the can. Now I know my missus, she got me, she got me a 500 mil can of, Priory Evil Twin Bible Bell. Yeah. From Beer Jump for, for, for Christmas for me. I haven't opened it yet. It's still sitting in the cupboard. And that was about, I think that was 10 euros. Mm-hmm. So it was like just under, just under nine quid, is it? Yeah, something nine like pounds? that. So about eight yeah. pounds. It's more or less like a like, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, a pound more. I haven't had the beer yet, so I can't really compare it. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. But 
you know, I'm, like I'm saying, you said earlier on about, you know, um, even more cocoa Jesus maybe being a pound more. Yeah. yeah. Is, you, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, you, it's an you, odd one to call. You would opt to, like, get that, like, added extra version yeah. of the beer as opposed to, like, the base beer. Yeah, yeah, I get you. You, you spend, you, you're, shelling out, you're shelling out a lot of money for one can of beer. Do you, do you take the leap of faith and, and pay that wee bit extra just to sort of cement the satisfaction that you're going to get yeah, from it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's like, it, I've got to be very hard pressed to pay more that I feel comfortable with uh, mm. when it comes to beers. But um, normally my cut off for, for a can of beer. Or a bottle of beer. Normally, my cut off's about seven quid. Yeah. And then I, I have to sort of scratch my head sometimes with that and think, "Hang on a minute." I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, like like IPAs or. I mean, I've seen I've seen some lagers going for like seven quid a can. I think that's right. Like, no, no, that. no, no. That's not happening. Imperial stouts, maybe. Yeah. That that's. That style alone has got um, an element of luxury about it, anyway. But lagers and saisons and stuff like that, you, you know, you've got to draw the line. You, you can't really sort of pay that much for that because I don't think you're going to get a great deal extra from it, anyway. No, no. You'll be like, yeah, this is this is nice. It's not mm. like dot 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 pounds nice, but it, it's nice on the yeah, same. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think the most expensive beer I've bought was when I was um, just about to leave Germany because I needed to get rid of the Euros that I had. And it's like um, a 750 bottle, a collaboration between um, Fry Guy Vehicle Tour in Germany and Against the Grain. Okay. And it's a smoked Adam beer, which is like a traditional German style. And I'd seen the bottle so many times in a... Uh, Beretta, the bottle shop that I used to shop at. And I'm like, do you know what? I've not got that much room in my suitcase. It's pointless me buying like six different beers, which I'll probably just have to consume before mm. I leave. I've got potential bottle shop uh, bottle swaps coming up in the new year. Just splash out, get rid of your Euros. And I was like, yeah. Even at that point, I was like kicking myself for paying that much for one single bottle of beer. Go on. Yeah, 25 euros for... Um, it's like, oof. Ooh. But it's like, I'm just going to be shake walking... When you, when you were handing it over? Did I you get like, your wrist shaking? I had to like literally with my other hand. But no, no, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> let go, let go, let go of the money, Pia. Let go. Yeah. So you know that 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 bottle of beer. That that's why I just can't age beer at all because I get so impatient. It's it's a very yeah. I've 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 done I've managed to do it on a few bottles, but I think my max is like a year. I can't yeah. really go any yeah. over that. You know. I've, it just every time I open the cupboard and it's just it's just there, it's staring at me and it's thinking, oh, you forgot me, drink me yeah. now, sort drink of me. Drink all the time. It's like no. <laughs> but uh um, I'm gonna age you, go away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's hard work. Hard yeah, work doing. I can still understand why people have problems with pricings when it comes to beer. Mm. That's, I mean, some of these sour beers and stuff, they, they command quite a nice price, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. See, uh, that's one style that I don't really want to spend too much money on. I, yeah. I, I, I don't get it. I mean, there's, there's certain, like, Jester King bottles in Beer Gonzo going for upwards of 18 quid a bottle. <laughs> I'm like, nah, nah. Don't, I don't dig it at all. But I know the people out there that do, and that's... that's Fair enough, because there's probably people that don't dig imperial stouts. Yeah, yeah. That's just how it is. I'm just quickly getting the uh, the other scores. 
or from the websites. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to be so cautious of price, even like 10 years down the line after like getting like a bigger experience of the world of craft beer. Mm. It's, it's just the way I am. It's, and it can ca- it can catch you out because I, I, kn- I know that there are certain maybe not necessarily the breweries but maybe a few bottle shops that see a, or, or manage to get hold of a beer that they can stop and sell to the public and they think hang on a minute this has got let's make some money out of it attached yeah. to it you know let, yeah. let, let's ramp it up and, and bowl it out for 10 quid a can or whatever um, I mean, we, we, we've said in, in the past before about um, a certain beer that was, um, I think when you were over in Germany, mate, we saw certain cans of, uh, was it Trillium stuff that was over here? And it oh, was like 11 euros a can or something stupid. Yeah, I think, oh, I think it was post, a shop in Belgium was selling single cans of uh, various trillion beers for 18 euros a can that's it yeah and it's like i can't I mean, pay that i can't pay that for an ipa especially an international it's a sheer daylight robbery yeah there's, no, yeah there's no getting around it yeah that's just taking the piss that is yeah. and i mean yeah. well, we're getting like stuff like trillium and um you know the alchemist Trials. yeah trials Al- yeah some of their beers are now making their way to some of the european websites for like still a little bit expensive for what it is i'd, I'd always want to either try it on keg in the uk or either try it in the place of origin where it's a lot fresher than uh, some of the stuff we get but you know people people pine over that sort of stuff and fair play because from what i can gather it's really good stuff but i just i know for a fact that in the uk there's just got to be comparable beers to some of these really highly acclaimed uh, international beers. There just has to be. Like, law of averages, there are just so many people who've, like, pretty much just invested their pro- beer production to try and emulate these styles of beers. Mm. I, I mean, as regards to the, the UK... I think I think we hold our own, really, definitely. Oh, uh, yeah. Some of the stuff that's being being bowled out at the moment: Verdant, Cloudwater, Northern Monk, um, Magic Rock. You know, they're, they're they're just fucking they're they're making some absolutely belting beers. And and Verdant, I so so want to get my hands on a Verdant beer. Yeah, and I'm, I'm seriously yeah, lacking. Whatever, whatever I can get my hands on, really, I just don't see it around here. I keep no. looking on their website and it's just sold out, sold out, or coming soon. Nothing seems to materialise anywhere. Yeah. Because Plus, they're, they're making some bloody awesome stuff at the moment. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to try putty. Just mm. from what people have said and people whose opinions I trust, putty just sounds mm, fantastic. Yeah. Just everything you want from the beer. Yeah, yeah. But that being said, some of the McKellar, uh, like hazy IPAs and pale ales I've had, have been damn good. But then I think that that's a style of beer now that you've got to brew a really shit one for it to be shit. There's like you've got to do something wrong for that not to be a satisfying drinking experience. Because a lot of them do blend into one another. Um, you know, you'd be hard pressed if you were to drink these beers on a regular basis. So, like, say, oh well, this is definitely blah 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 from blah 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 blah. Yeah, because there's there's not that much alteration um, between the beers themselves. Yeah, I mean, what do you, what do you think the next sort of wave of the next trend will be regarding style. I mean, we were, we were completely absorbed with dippers, weren't we? And, and yeah. New England IPAs. <sighs> what 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 do you think's next? What what's coming up next? Do you think? I actually don't really know. Um, I could not 
I, I wouldn't be able to point a finger on a specific. I, I, th- I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be IPA involved, but but how and why and yeah. what I don't know. I reckon I think IPA is going to be in the, there somewhere. Yeah, there could be a call for these more like classic, really resiny, oily West Coast like, stuff IPAs yeah. as opposed to fruit yeah. ones. But that being said, mm. I don't know. I think it, it's probably going to be like a style that that was fate, like that's had its like wave of popularity like ten years ago, fifteen years ago. You know, I think I don't think there's anything distinctly new when it comes to like craft beer trends no. uh, because there's there's always got to be that it's got to sell fundamentally it's got to be a, a high selling item so you know something like a chili you know saison or something like that that that's a very acquired taste that's not going to be like a really popular style of beer whereas like ipa you know everyone Pretty much everyone cut the teeth on IPAs when it comes to craft beers, or a good a good number of people when getting into craft beers were like, "Oh, I'll get this IPA, I'll get this IPA, and I'll get this IPA." And you you'll find that in a lot of the supermarkets, well, especially near me, when they've got a craft range, it's always like pale ales, IPAs. They like that. that but they're, they're like the big sellers because you know it's a very satisfying style of beer to drink. I find. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, it, if, it, if it's if it's done right, you know, you, you know, you've got you've got a pretty decent drinking experience to come. But I've had I've had a few IPAs in the past where it's been a you know fell short of the mark. Oh yeah. But then yeah. You've, you, you know you, you've had you've had equally on the or on the other hand you, you know you've had some absolutely mesmerising drinking experiences with with that sort of style. Yeah. So that that you know that's what I think that's what, what we do though, isn't it? You know, we, we like to sort of mess about and try different stuff and not and not be sort of nailed to. You know, going back to that beer again. You know, I, know, I know you said like, you know, you, you definitely take a look at this beer again, but it it's nice to just, sort of just, just keep going on and on and, and sit, always trying something that you haven't had before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's like a that's a problem when it comes to a lot of these beers. Is I'll, I'll even like saying reviews. Oh. I'd happily drink this beer again. I'd happily go out tomorrow and buy it. How many times do I actually do that? Very rarely. Um, a lot of the times I'll just pick up something new just because it's something new. Mm. And to be honest, the only beers that I buy on a regular basis, yeah, they're like easy, accessible beers, affordable beers. You know, stuff like Elvis juice or like Hobgoblin. Yeah, that's a beer that I drink a lot of. And, you know, it's never like, oh, I'm, I'm going to get a four pack of this, like, you know, verdant beer or something. It's always like, if I've got the opportunity to, I'll, I'll get one can. I'll get one can and like other beers. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know, in a weird way, you're sort of like working against the industry if or a brewery that you, you supposedly like if you're just like buying one beer of those at a time as opposed to like, do you know what? I'll buy a four pack of this beer. Yeah, that it, that, it, that it, it, hasn't it, it, happened yeah. to me in a long time. But, but is that going back to like what we were saying earlier on about switching the camera on and, and, and standing in front of the camera? I, th- I think so. I think that the reviewer part of the it, brain it comes, in, like, doesn't comes it? into yeah. focus and it's like do you know what in, in this bottle shop i could happily pick up like four like two cans of that beer two bottles of that beer because i absolutely loved it but then you're looking around and you're thinking oh that'd be an interesting review i can review that one oh, yeah, exactly. I, I could do i could do a live review of this one with someone else yeah yeah 
it, it does, it gets old in you. I've, I've been out, I've been out shopping before with, with, with the missus and oh, you know, she, she has a, she has a, has a, has a glance at the beer shelf and see something that she thinks that I haven't had before and thinking it's, oh, oh, oh this must be a new beer. Have you had this? And look over. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I've done it. What about this one? Yeah, done that, done that, done that, done that. Yeah. You know, good beers and maybe if you're in the mood, you know, yeah, stick, stick one in the basket. Yeah, I'll just drink it for the sake of it. You know, I know I've had it. But yeah, yeah, that, 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 that sort of beer reviewer thing sort of clicks on and you think, no, that's new. I've, I've got to buy that. Yeah, it's new. Yeah. Never had it before. I'm intrigued by it. Yeah. I don't know, it I seems like there's never like two or three versions of a style that I buy on a regular basis. It's always like, I always buy this brand of like an IPA. I always buy this brand of like a blah, 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 blah. It's like with the, the Elvis juice, you know, I think that's probably just my, that is probably my go-to at this point because every time I've had it, it's such a satisfying experience. But, like, I've noticed now, I've bought, like, J.W. Lee's Moonraker English Strong Ale about ten times since I first tried it. I because so it's like, that. Yeah. Because this is, like, this is my English Strong Ale. I absolutely love it. And the great thing about English Strong Ales is they sort of remind me of a Doppelbox in their flavour profiles. So it's like I could I could spend like three or four quid on a like the Weltenberg, a Kloster, Assambach, or yeah. you, it, whatever traditional German highly regarded Doppelbock, or I could in a supermarket deal for like four for six quid pick up this beer that although completely different brewing process, I still yeah. get those like same yeah. familiar flavors characteristics. But I mean, I'll, I'll have to pick you up a bottle of the uh, Moonraker because that that's that's a really really good one. Yeah, I've, I've heard some, I know I know yourself. You spoke quite highly about the. It's um it's got a bit of a it, it sounds pretty perfect to be honest. Yeah, it, it's what you it's exactly what you want with the style, in my opinion. I'm just I'm just trying to wrap my brain now that sort of beers that I've had on on sort of multiple times. Probably, I mean, off the top of me, I probably as full as eighteen forty-five. I've had I've had a few bottles of that. Probably going back even. I mean, gamma ray. I, I became obsessed with that. Oh yeah. I yeah. That was. I think. I think every, everyone at some point in their beer journeys dabbled with gamma ray on more than one occasion. Mm-hmm. And I I did. I. I I really love that beer. Uh, oh, Roger! I keep buying that. I, I seem to keep buying that all the time. Oh, Roger! That's quite, that's quite a quaffable stuff. That is. <laughs> I don't think I've tried that one yet. Seven point four percent, but it's quaffable for some strange reason. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, so, so many good British real ales get overlooked because of this, like, camera stink stigma. I mean, if you were blind tasting, oh God, yeah, you wouldn't think it was a master beer for sure. It, 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 it's quite complex, really, for a, a mass produced beer like that under the master's umbrella. It's got a lot going for it. Um, it's, it's a really sort of rich, heavy, fruity sort of beer, you know. I'm going to have to make a conscientious effort to pick a bottle of that up. Yeah, definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you would enjoy drinking it for sure. I, um, I don't think it'd let you down, mate. It's, it's, I think it's a pretty decent beer, mm-hmm. and it's it's just you know being Marston's, you know it, that sort of throws you off a bit. You think, mm, is it going to be sort of mediocre, below average sort of experience? But it's not. It's definitely a pick of the bunch from that brewery for sure. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that one. 
because I've seen it quite a few times now on like the shelves in various like supermarkets and stuff. But, uh, I'll quickly go through uh, what the websites say about Even More Jesus and then I shall read the comments. So, Beer Advocate gave an overall score of 4.29 out of 5, which I can I can agree with. That's, that's not too overhyped. Um, <laughs> Ray Beer, surprisingly, gave this 100 overall and 98 for style. See, I don't know, scores like that, I'm like, well, what what would you need to get that two points to make that like a perfect 100 100? Yeah. Has that ever happened? What was that? Has that ever happened? I'm not too sure. I don't know I don't if there's actually one. I've seen quite a few hundreds on right there, but I've never seen double. No, I don't think I've actually seen a hundred in both categories. No, yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't completely agree with the 100 overall, but I can definitely understand it. If that makes sense, um, I've I've seen much less preposterous scores for beers. Yeah, it's, especially it, on rate beer. But um, it, 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 I mean, it definitely, it definitely commands over ninety five without you know no two ways about it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's an absolutely fantastic beer. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm. Right. No. And uh, <laughs> out of 1,020 reviews, 100 overall isn't too bad by Rate Beard's standards. And then Untapped gives this 4.14 out of 5 out of, Jesus Christ, 69,000. 732 reviews. Wow. Yep. And apparently the wow. uh, the, the 2017 vintage got 4.17 out of 5 from 584 reviews, which I'm guessing is the version that we had. I guess so. Yeah, well, it, it, it's hard to tell when the best before date is the uh, 4th of the 10th, 2027. So um, <laughs> unless you're very familiar with the uh, evil twin dating systems. Okay. <laughs> so, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, just, just out of interest, I'm like looking at the uh, similar beers on Untapped. They've got the even more Coco Jesus. Uh, they've got the uh, stuff like Imperial Biscotti Break. Yeah, I tell you what, Evil Twin Brewery are a brewery that I need to yeah. try a lot more. Have they got a donut break one as well? Something like that? I think they have, and I think they've got like a vanilla shake or something like that. I'm not too sure. You, you name it, they've done it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I shall read the comments that we've received, and we shall see what people have to say about the beer. So, do, 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 do. No, we've had quite a few comments actually. So we had uh, Angry Joe saying, oh, two beers. I'm so happy. Uh, well, I'm glad we uh, we pleased you, Joe, with your incredibly high standards. And uh, then Drunken One chimed in, said, the star of the show, I'm here. Good pun. Always appreciated. Hope you're doing well, my friend. 
And then Joe goes on to say, even while Jesus is so tasty, I've probably enjoyed all the variants. I have even more Cocoa Jesus in the fridge. Well, whoop de freaking do, Joe. But no, no seriously, I, I'd love to try the uh, variants yeah, of right. even more Jesus after drinking this. Just absolutely fantastic. I mean, I was hoping that after we'd finished reviewing, I'd have a little bit left to... Uh, do a review on the channel but i, I don't think that's going to happen because it's it's just too damn drinkable yeah i've got a little bit left now because yeah. the shame is going down so quick yeah honest, something but... like that should not be as drinkable as it is but i'm i'm kind of thankful for it because it's just such a, a satisfying experience it, it's got it's got that go back to sort of thing though hasn't it you know you, you have a sip you put it down yeah. and you think I want another sip. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. just got that to it. There's, there's no way I could, like, have a can of this and just not drink all of it within, like, an hour. Yeah. You, and, you, and I know you should do. You hour, should you? rarely yeah. take your time with it, but it's just... they They've done such a good job of masking that 12% ABV. Dangerous. Really. Yeah, it, it's a very dangerous beer. Fantastic stuff. Again, Dean, thank you so much for sending me this. Nah, don't worry about it, mate. Don't worry about no, it. I, I can't help it, mate. It's just fucking awesome. <laughs> when I get to try beers like this, I'm like, oof. But um, then we've got Chris on the temp saying, currently in drinking one of my seven cans of IPA number six, which I think is from um, Collective Arts in Can in Canada. Which there's there are so many Canadian breweries that I want to try. Just some of their beers from what I've seen from the Canadian reviewers. I know. Uh, uh, is, it, is it is it Beer Republic? They they stock a lot of uh, American and Canadian beers, craft beers. Ah, okay. I have to look into them because yeah, yeah the, the the craft market in Canada just seems really fantastic mm. at this point. And then uh, Terry replied to our comments before, says, thanks for the shout-out, chaps. Uh, we wouldn't say it if we didn't mean it, Terry. Don't give him a sub. Terry's quick beer yeah. reviews. Check him out. Yep, check him out. Click on those comments. Look at his profile. Give him a subscribe. Fantastic guy. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you want, like, really honest reviews on beer, with, you can tell there's no prejudice, there's no, oh, I'm not usually into this sort of stuff. Just just so relatable. That That's what I like about Terry. And first and foremost, he's just a, a fucking awesome guy from my interactions with him. Hello, YouTube world. Yeah. Hello, YouTube world. Welcome to another Terry's group beer review. <laughs> He's always off to go to the working room yeah, yeah. or the darts or something like that, which is fine by me. Uh, then we've... One of them guys, you'd be quite happy to have a, have a, a nice pint of bitter with him and just set the world to rights. He's one of them sort of guys. Yep. He's that sort of guy where you'd go into the pub with like a group of people, but you'd find yourself sat at the bar talking to him for like two hours. Yeah. Just about yeah. anything. Anything. Yeah. Anything. And beer would obviously pop into it because he's he's got a love of beer. Yeah. Or he would be doing doing what he's doing, like but yeah, go go and check him out. He's a quality guy. Lift him back up again because obviously he had a he had a bit of jip with his channel. He, he, yeah, he did, yeah. He was he, he had quite a lot of content, didn't he, at one point? And he had yeah, he had it, it, it well, just disappeared. It like just yeah, all went. So it annoys me so get, much. Let's get back up to where he was. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. If I remember, I will add his link into the um, description of the video for people watching this after the live hangout. But people watching the hangout, just click on his name, go to view profile, check him out, give him a sub, and uh, yeah, fantastic guy. I, thought, I don't think people do that enough, shouting out of a. YouTubers, especially 
with the way YouTube's going now. Yeah. You know, if if you've got like someone to promote or a brewery to promote or a beer to promote, then just shout it from the hills. Let people know. And uh yeah, that that that's why I always make a point if when I do a beer review, if someone else has reviewed that beer who I like talk to on a regular basis. I'll always put their reviews in the description yeah, below. I, I, religiously, you always, you know, I mean, you, you, your recent video that I watched earlier on with Jack Daniels, you, you've linked it and everything like that. And, um, you know, I, I think it's nice just the sort of honourable mentions and stuff every yeah. now and again, you know, the, yeah. the fellow, fellow beer tubers of all ilk, you know, because there's, there's a little group, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Little group of us. Um, yeah, it's nice. it's just nice, you know. It's just showing respect as well, really. Because I, I respect all, all the other guys out there that are doing it. You know, their opinion, their opinions do matter on on beers. There's no getting away from it because they're honest, they're real, and they're bullshit. You know, yep. to keep it, to keep it true. Yeah, and I think you should support the good ones. You should do what you can to, you know, you might not be able to watch people's videos on a regular basis, but yeah, well, that's what YouTube's for, though, isn't yeah. it? You know, there's no, there's no sort of you've got to watch it here and now sort of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a beautiful thing, especially with beer reviews, because at the the weirdest time, you could like see a surge in like the views on a specific video. And you're like, okay, fair enough. Yeah, you know, you know that, that that's why. As much as I'd love to drink like these, like hyped, like drink this right now. This is brand new. I got this sent straight from the brewery. Pick this up like super fresh. Yeah. You, you know, it, it's always nice to have those beers where, like, you know, stuff like Guinness Extra Strong or like the uh, Guinness Extra Stout, I should say. Yeah, that that's always going to be a beer that's going to be researched by a lot of people. There's so many variations of it as well, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. I, I didn't know Belgium had a version of it as well, which I, I, I managed to find it on beers in Europe. Oh, yeah. The Belgian version of the Guinness export style. And it was like, I think it was less than three quid a bottle. Oof. Very nice. That's got to be interesting. ABV was slightly higher than the usual Nigerian, which is around the seven percent ish mark. Mm -hmm. I think this was maybe borderline in eight. I thought, fucking hell, I've got to get a bottle of that to, to you know give it a bash. But went on to look at beers in Europe the following week or whenever, and it was bloody out of stock. So oh. missed the boat on that one. Yeah. But. Intrigued, nevertheless, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right, it's Guinness, but I, I was fascinated by it. Yeah. Just, just to compare it to maybe other other versions. And and I think we've we've brought this point up um, multiple times on like various hangouts, but I I don't know about you, but I'm I'm much more interested about the story of some of those beers as opposed to like, oh, this this is whatever his name is. He inherited money from his parents, so he decided to buy brewing equipment. And yeah. now he's got like the biggest craft brewery in dot 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 dot. I find yeah. like those like very traditional like stories that's got heritage to them. Yeah. I find them so much more interesting. And uh if you yeah. ever anyone out there who ever gets to visit Dublin, do yourselves a favour and go to the Guinness. Uh, premises and do the Guinness tour because it's, I mean, it's, it, it's uh, it just opens your eyes to just how big and how like dedicated someone mm. like they were I mean they like they literally had like 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 ships built so they could send off the beer to um, various parts of the world they didn't just like subcontract like um other companies they actually like had like planes big barges trains built for the sole purpose mm -hmm. of 
transferring their product there's, from I mean, one yeah, place to there's another. There's a lot more. There's a, there's a lot more history attached to. to Things like you know, like Guinness say, they they were micro once upon a time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Of course they were. It, it was a seed. It was planted. It grew, and it, it bloomed into this absolutely massive, global, well-known brand that it is today. You know, it's it's a complete a steamroller of a of a, a trademark. You know, and fair play to it. I drink. I drink a lot of Guinness. Yeah. I, I went. I went. You know. I went to my nose up at it. I think it's half decent myself. Yeah. And and to me, aside from like Jet Black Heart from Brewdog, the Guinness Milk Stout is probably the best milk stout you can yeah. get in the supermarket. You can't for, knock it. Was yeah. It one for less yeah, yeah, you can't complain at that, and it, it it's not just like oh this is this is an okay attempt at the style. It's like no, this is a really good mm. you know, interpretation of a a really intriguing style, and yeah, I think there's always going to be a time and a place for Guinness. Mm. I mean, there's a little retro. <laughs> yeah, every, you know, even people who aren't really into beer, how many people just see like Guinness T-shirts? You know that. Yeah, that, I, I love I love the old artwork of you know the yeah. palette and and the you know all all them sort of old posters that you see lying about. The, the old Guinness sort of um, it's 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 great. I, I I love it. Yeah, I'm I'm all about that sort of stuff with Guinness. And to be honest, they drink they brew a lot of really good beers. Mm. Like. <laughs> I mean this this um, this open gate stuff that they do. Um, they've made some they've made some really really good beers. weren't a particular fan of that that rye thing that they did. Oh yeah, yeah. Or the wheat beer that was. Mm. But I mean anything dark. Now oh, yeah. on the edge, really, yeah. Dublin yeah. Porter, West Indies Porter. That they're just solid. They're solid, dependable porters really. You know, you can't really knock that. Knock them for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll never hear a bad word said about Guinness. I don't know, there's just something about them. Um, and when you go on, like, the, the brewery tour and stuff, you know, you find out that, you know, when it was, like, World War Two, not only did they, like, send off, like, shipments of the beer for the soldiers, but if anyone was conscripted, to fighting the forces like guinness pledged well do you know what we're going to look after your family and if you come back you've always got a job with us at the factory and there's not too many businesses who would do stuff like that not not in this day and age i mean oh god no you know, just just that well you, you're a number now aren't you yeah you're easily in your face because you've got you've got a million and one people in the queue waiting for your job, and 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 the companies know that as well. They know that you step out of line, you're gone. You know we'll get someone else coming to fill your boots. You haven't got that loyalty anymore. You haven't no. got that sort of family connection with with your work anymore. That that's all gone now. Right? You know you you just you just a clocking in number. Yeah, that's a shame. It is a good show. Yeah. And just seeing all these businesses like shutting down and going into administration and it's like all, all of the, the, the people who are suffering because of that and it's like it did not need to happen. You know, if you'd have managed it better, if you were actually good with money and yeah, but, but, but that that's a, another debate for another day, I suppose. You could have a whole hangout about Peru. Oh, God, yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, to lighten the mood, I shall read the, the last few comments. So there's uh, there's always interaction between other people, which is always good. But it, it doesn't make for great reading, let's be honest, where there are people having little conversations. But, hey, do you know what? That's, that's what it's all about. If you can talk to different people about different things 
I'm happy for people to bombard comments with like their own little sub threads or conversations. That's what it's all about, really. Uh, right. Not that not that anyone's like taking the piss with comments and stuff, but I'm, you know, that's why I'm never one of those people who will like censor people or like say, oh, don't don't, don't talk about this unless it's like a really touchy subject. I'll be like, yeah, let's let, let's leave it until we're at least offline but um <laughs> but yeah so you know i'm i'm, I'm always for reading the, the little conversations in the comments it, it, it it's always entertaining some of the stuff like knocks you back a little bit but um it's all in good fun so apparently drunken one in reference to us uh, smelling the uh, even more Jesus, said, just drink the damn thing. Uh, if we'd have done that, we'd be in a pretty messy state right now, I'd imagine. Well, we, we, we've done it eventually. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got there. Mm. And then uh, Chris says, language please. There are children watching this. Not really. If there are children watching this, shame on you. Don't watch us. Uh, he also asked dry palette afterwards. Um, I didn't get a dry palette. Um, I didn't get any like chlorine no, characteristics you, from you, this. Just sort of wanting to go back to it again, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, you, you picked it up, had a sit, put it down, and yeah, it, it's very Moorish. Oh, yeah. It's amazing how a beer like that can just be like, yeah, well, I, I, I just swig this. 12% beer, it's just, it's, it's bloody, it, it's quite drinkable, really. It's scary. Yeah. See, that's like a thing when it's like, when I'm doing reviews, it's like, is it a good thing that this is a really drinkable, like 17.5% beer? Or is it? it it shows, it shows the quality that's gone into the red, doesn't it? If, yeah, if yeah. they can hide, excuse me, if they can hide twelve percent with flavour, then they've done a pretty, really good job, haven't they? Yep. Yeah. Full compliments to them for doing that. Yeah. Because I've had I've had much less ABV beers where you drink them and you're like, oh, ethanol. All I can taste yeah, is yeah, ethanol, just yeah. this horrible alcohol, like pure yeah. alcohol flavour. But this is it's just acetone, sort of horrible. yeah, acetone, yeah, yeah, yeah. horrible. <laughs> and then, um, Craig says that this was his 500th review on his channel, which, um, I'm not sure if I watched, I might have watched yeah yeah a fitting beer i'd say and then he says there's been talk of a mckellar bar in london for years i think that would that, uh, be the first port of call wouldn't it for someone like oh that, yeah so. yeah london well, would be the perfect place for them to open yes. up the first shop <clears throat> and then we've got a Teku Murray, aka Ewart, who uh, hangs around with those crazy Canadians. Hope you're doing well, my friend. And uh, in his King Troll moment, uh, all in good fun trolling, by the way, not this like I wish death on you trolling, <laughs> which isn't really trolling. It that's just that's just bullying outright. He says, "What the fuck is this shite? A hangout without red beard?" Who'd have funk it? <laughs> a little bit of uh, an inside joke there. Is he the old boy that wears sunglasses inside? Yeah, he always wears the sunglasses. Oh, yeah. Patches, patches the old beard, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll have to give him the sub, I think. I've, I've seen a couple of people's videos. The, the thing I'll say about Redbeard, and he's, the people have said this before, he can get a little bit too much at times. But then again, who doesn't? Who doesn't like at random moments just get a little bit too crazy and in people's faces? But uh, yeah, I, I like the guy. And uh, then he says, 
Even More Jesus is an awesome every day and every weekend stout. I wish that this could be my like go to. If it was if it was with a can, then you'd, you'd be on it. Yeah, yeah. Done. I think yeah. that you know that price point four quid. It'd be hard not to sort of pass it by. But then you know eight quid. It it does sort of sow the seed of um, you know you, you've got to make that leap of faith, haven't you? Yeah. And then he continues to say, no need for variants, fuck Joe, which is uh, fair enough. Uh, I, I I can't personally say uh, that I've had the variants of the Even More Jesus, but yeah, each to their own, Hewitt, if you're still watching this, because I know you commented quite a while ago. Um, then we've got... A little bit more banter between uh, some of the guys. And then Chris, in his ironic uh, tone, says, Peter will read the comments soon, which I think was about 45 minutes ago. <laughs> that, that, that's one thing that I really need to work on, is like keeping up to date with the, the insanity that's going on in the comments. And then there's a little bit more banter between people. Uh, on the temp says, I love the sours. Um, it depends what sort of sour it is, to be honest. Um, some of them can be a little bit too overbearing for me. Mm. Yeah, not not a style I would automatically go to. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. I don't mind dabbling with, but it's it's not personally for me. It's it's not my favourite style. And then we had another comment from uh, Teku Murray Hewitt, who said, Oh shit, Northern Monk had a couple at a spot in BCN, smashing. Uh, I'm guessing BCN is British Columbian. I'm not sure, because I know some of the Northern Monk stuff has made its way to like Northern America now with uh, more beer. Because I think the uh, LCBOs in... Um, what, what province in Canada is the LCBO? Is it like the more Toronto based, or I can't remember. it basically in Albino Rhino's neck of the woods? Um, they've received a big shipment of um, Northern Monk and more beers, which it's amazing that there are people in Canada who've drank more, more beers than I have. Here in the UK, because I never see them. Yeah, I, I'm, I think I might, I might have had one beer from them guys. Are they, are they the ones that were responsible for the, um, the sort of Star Wars sort of themed beers? Is, is that I think so, yeah. 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 No, I don't, I don't see their beers very often around here. I don't even think they're gone, so stop that. That stuff might be mistaken. No, I don't. I don't think I've ever seen a can of their beers. What, in what are they then? Are they are they um, a Bristol outfit? I think Bath, so. Yeah. Bath, Bristol. Yeah. Something like that. And then um, got a a lovely comment from Craig here says. I've missed that greasy hair, Peter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it, 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 it's a turning point in my uh, YouTube career that I actually have uh, freshly washed hair before I get into beer reviews. <laughs> because there are there are quite a few. There are too many beer reviews on my channel where you can clearly tell that my hair is uh, a little bit too greasy for its own good. But I... Uh, like I say, it's the clueless drink away. You know, one hundred percent purely professional. Four K content. You've got to go down that road of the beanie as well, haven't you, mate? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. pe people are absolutely loving that beanie. Uh, yeah. Which is, uh, Keep it going, mate. Keep it yeah. going. Yeah, but 
that that's my niche. I'm carving out my niche on YouTube. It's only took me three years, but um, yeah. You're anyway, you're just talking about that. Like, yeah, you, know, you stick on cash and there's the same flag, you know. You, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That that that. I, I want that sort of like, oh, what, what, what's this? Good, what's this beer going to be about? What's this review going to be about? Nine times out of ten, it's just me like sat in front of the camera going, "All right, guys, with greasy hair." It's like, yeah, got this beer. Take four. Well, no, I mean, full respect to anybody that can do a beer review for ten minutes on a macro beer. I, I salute you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. That takes some fucking going, that does, I tell you. Oh, oh, oh it does, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there have been plenty. I, I, never, I never put myself on a timer or anything, but I know four minutes max, and I'm, I'm, running, out of, I'm running out of things to say, so I just call it a day there and then, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll very rarely go for six minutes, um, you know, so any, you know, like yourself, you know, that the, 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 like ten minute videos, that takes some going, that does. Oh, it does. There's a fair bit of dead air sometimes, but um, yeah, I don't see that's the thing with Dean that I really like is his videos are considerably shorter than a lot of people on BeerTube, but he can he can still. I'm I'm talking like Dean's not here, by the way. It's like Dean's not even involved in this chat right now, but. No, but the thing I love about the way you do your beer reviews, Dean, is in like the four minutes, I'd say at most, that um, your beer reviews are, you put so much useful information in the video where it's like you don't need to hear anything else. You know exactly what that beer is about, what to expect from that beer. And I think that's that's a really good skill to can condense it down to that much time but still in, inject it with a lot of information yeah I've, I've never really thought of that I just I just yeah. run with it you know I, I mean I'm, there's no script or anything I, I, it's, it's, it's just grab a beer decide what beer you have and grab a beer turn the camera on and just sort of wait for the best almost because I mean, I've got a lot of footage that's that's just, you know, I, I mean, I may do an outtakes video one day if I can ever sort of sort of mold it all together, where it's just sort of complete fucking gibberish. I, I'm, I'm I turn the camera on and I freeze, or I say I say the brewery wrong, I pronounce something wrong. You know what I mean? There's, there's loads of that, and that, and that's probably happened to you know loads of people that that do this sort of thing. Um, but I just, I don't know. I just, I just want to get on with it and just, just say it and get on with it. Uh, I, I like doing beer reviews, but I want to sort of get on with it, do it, have enough beer left so I can just uh, appreciate it. Yeah, sit back yeah. and just actually drink yeah. the beer without. Yeah, sit back on the sofa, yeah. watch yeah. the telly, and, and and finish the beer off, as opposed to chugging it all on camera for you lot. You know, which I do like doing, but it's sometimes nice to switch that camera off and sit back down and have that beer, you know. Yep. And it, it, it's like that weird thing, is it, when people, like, ask you about your content, it's like, oh, how do you manage to, like, do this, this, and this? And it's like, I don't think about it. I just do it. It's just... Just do it, yeah. There's, there's no, yeah, there's no dress rehearsal, is there, really? No. It's not like I'm, oh, do you know what? I'm going to make a... I'm going to specifically make a 12 minute video today and I'm going to try and like space the information out. It's just, no, it's just, you know, if, if I want to talk about something completely unrelated to the beer, like before I even open the beer, I'll just do it. Uh, you know, cause I used to, if you watched like the very early clueless drinker videos, there was a hell of a lot of like cutting away and cutting out, this information, that information, I was like, no, just, just, just do it. it. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the worst, the worst thing someone can do is just, like, end your video about halfway through. That's, that's no skin off my back, because someone's actually invested 
that much time to hear what I've got to say about a beer. And if they get bored about halfway through, fair enough. Yeah. No, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain. I think it, it, it's it's the real it's the realism of it. There's no you know it's not it's not dressed up to look look fancy and glamorous like um, you know some of these some of these YouTube videos that are not beer related just just YouTube videos that are sort of glammed up to the, to the mountains you know it's, we're, we're, we're fucking human beings at the end of the day yeah. We make we might make the odd mistake. We might say the wrong word. It's, it, that's real. That's, that's life. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah. Why gloss it up and make it look something that it's fucking not? You know, because there's lots of people out there on YouTube that do do that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, some of these bloody. I think you've said before on a couple of rants, mate. Some of these fucking families that. Parade their bloody kids on the tele- on on it, you know. Paint a smile on it. Oh look, look, look at us! We're, we're we're shopping in the supermarket. Why the fuck do we want to see that? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, look, d- d- look, do you want this toy, Millie? Do you want do you want to buy this toy, Millie? It's like, yeah. no, you're not going to buy that toy. It's like, well, I'm glad you wasted that one minute of my life because you're not going to buy the fucking toy for the baby. It's like, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, my well, husband's power washing the garage out. Let's yeah. film it and let's put it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I've got this water balloon that I'm going to throw at my husband who's in the garage attending to his car. It's going to be great, YouTube. And it's like, I don't want to see that. That That's... It's yeah. like, wow. I mean, wow. You yeah. threw a water balloon. I've never seen that happen in my life before. I wonder what could possibly happen when you throw a, a balloon full of water at someone. Yeah. What? Yeah. What will happen? Yeah. I've oh, got to watch it to find oh, out. Oh wow, he's got a little bit wet. I never yeah. knew that would happen. And now so. he's undoing his belt and he's going to belt me to an yeah. inch in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the camera off. Yeah. You fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting to like till there's one of these videos where they forget to edit out properly, but it's like, don't you make me take my belt up. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's like... Yeah. It's like... Take your kids away. Video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's a hell of a lot of trash on YouTube. Yeah. It's 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 um it's a homing beacon for stuff like that though, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. And to, to be honest, fair play to the people who can like use it to make money and forge yeah. out a career for themselves. A because of, a lot of people have done very well out of it. Yeah, because if it if they weren't doing it on YouTube, they'd have like gone through different avenues and just got an equal amount of fame from it. So it's like, yeah, fair enough. You've you've used YouTube for your own pleasure. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you're bringing in like six figures each year just from making YouTube. Yeah, I, I, I can't, you, you can't be angry at people like that. You, you, you can't like kick off with people like that because, yeah, the, the, they, no, they, it, they, it, it, they, They've been brave or bold or, or, or however you want to you want to say it. They've created a following. The following yeah. is snowballed into figures unbelievable, which has created massive revenues for these people that that make oh. this sort of content. Um, if, if the people, you know, if the masses want it, then you know, fair play to them. Yeah. You know, that, that's that's why I, yeah, I can never understand why people get angry at like these big YouTubers. And I'm like, well, oh, all right. Just because it's not stuff you'd produce on a like a daily basis doesn't mean it's wrong fundamentally. It's just mm. they've they've realized who their like core demographic is and how they can like 
manipulate that audience mm. to like elevate them to this like almost celebrity status. And I'm like, mm. who am I to judge? Like, the, the, what what good would it be if I was like say, oh, you're just a fake? This is my expose video of you, and it's like I mean, oh. my my um my ten year old daughter. She she watches. I mean that st- stampy stampy longhead is it? Stampy, mm-hmm. I recognise the name. I think I've heard people talking about him. He, he does Minecraft videos. Oh yeah yeah yeah. He, I mean he's unbelievable following. Absolutely, and it, it, it's that sort of sort of age group. You know, it's. And uh, and it, it, I mean, it, it, fair play to him. He sounds like a CBBS presenter. He's he just got that sort of voice, you know, oh, that, yeah. that sort of fits into that sort of what a child would be want to hear, sort of thing. You know, when he's when he's doing his online game walkthroughs or whatever he does. Yeah, and that, and that's just a guy just playing bloody Minecraft and, and other games. I think it's the majority of his Minecraft. Just oh, fucking phenomenal. Yeah, definitely. I see that, that. That's why I get like a little bit frustrated when people say, "Oh, you're creating content. That's you're supposed to be like a. You're supposed to set a good example for my children." And I'm like, "Hang on, why? Why is it a person on YouTube's job to set a good example to your children? If you've got a problem with the stuff that you're like your kids are watching." Just stop them from watching it. it it's, it's gone off to them. And like, like you were saying, the, the, the stuff that you were just talking about, there's there's nothing offensive about that stuff. There's no like ulterior motive. It's just content aimed for children, which is you know fair enough. Absolutely no problem with that. But it's like when people, like with this whole um, Logan Paul situation. Yeah, I don't really know the end of that. I know, I know you've mentioned it before. Basically, yeah. To be fair, he's a 22-year-old guy who has reached like stupid amounts of fame. So you know, it's it's not going to be like the most careful or conscientious content creator when he's got like this fanfare. He's got millions injected to what he's doing. You know, he's just a young guy making the most of what's available to him and so, so am i right in thinking that he, he's a bit like this guy that was kicked off the i'm a celebrity get me out of here he was a, he was a youtuber as well wasn't he? i'm not too sure who i i don't know who he, who he was he, he did a tweet didn't he, he tweeted about something that, that was... oh yeah yeah like about six years ago or something and like oh no gotta yeah, get rid of you shit. Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got to ask you because you said this six years ago, and you're in the public eye. Yeah, it's like it's like you knew about this already. Why didn't you just not cast him in the show? Exactly. They must have done their research and realised that. Well, he said this then. Yeah, I don't know. Or is is or is it like a public sort of? public uh, humiliation you know oh uh, excuse me mr so-and-so we want you to come on to this show of course yeah. they're going to snatch their hands off because it's it, you know you're, you're you're on telly you're live and then we're going to pull the rugs from under you your feet and make you look out like a demon sort of, you know yeah exactly oh, you, yeah. You, you said this six years ago you know you're off piss off we don't want yeah. that it's like don't don't bring him on in the first place hmm. i don't know just but... don't even entertain him yeah to begin with but yet, yeah, th- this guy Logan Paul, like really big YouTuber in America, does like the whole vloggy stuff. Uploads a video every day. He's got people who like help edit the videos and produce them for him. He's got like a merchandise shop on YouTube, so he he's making big amounts of money from this. So he made this video, which don't get me wrong, I think what he did was so fucking distasteful. Like the the lowest of the low, so he went to Japan to this uh, forest, which is infamous for people like 
committing <coughs> suicide in the forest. It's known as the suicide forest. You know, if there's any video that you should not let your child watch in the first place is any video with the words suicide forest in the video. Mm. So th that was my first big problem with this. So he went to this like forest in Japan and uh, he was he was quite insensitive with how he dealt with coming across like a dead body uh, who, in the forest, a guy who committed suicide, hanged himself. So, you know, he was showing it on camera I and mean, he was blowing it out. But the fact that he was like showing it on camera and you could like you could recognize the clothes. So if the family just happened to be watching that video, they'd be able to say, oh, God, that dad left this morning wearing that outfit oh, God. and like his reactions it was a little bit jokey which i think is a little bit of like a, a reaction to it because you know you might you're probably going to try and make light of it if you come across a dead body in the forest mm. let's just be honest you know you if you're a content creator you're going to be like oh god you know the normal person would have just like stopped filming straight away never yeah. acknowledged it okay. never released it you wouldn't you wouldn't go there because you'd know that that, yeah. you, that there is a, a small chance of you seeing a, someone swinging from a bloody tree. Yeah. So he must have, he must have known that. Oh yeah. He was yeah. Going to be faced with this horrible thing. Yeah. See, see, that's the thing. I'll I'll not defend him for what he did because that's just so distasteful. It's so abhorrent. It's so ignorant. Why would you even? As soon as you come across like a body hanging on a tree just yeah turn your camera off let the authorities know move on and film something else you know go about your day so he made this video where he's like walking in the forest and then of course like youtube as a result you know brought these new policies in even though this has been going on for a couple of years now with like um I don't know if you know him, PewDiePie on YouTube. Yeah, I've heard of him, yeah. 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 Who, who made like, um, he made a couple of videos where he was like trying to prove a point where uh, there's a website called Fiverr where you can like get people to like promote your channel. Like they'll make like a quirky little video like saying, oh, go subscribe to this channel and you'll pay like five pounds to them. And he was like, what if I said deaf to Jews? To this like little company on this website mm -hmm. would they actually go through with like their the request like holding up a sign saying deaf to jews which no no one rational would like accept that money to say you know hold up a, this sign on the internet and say deaf to jews so he did that and he was legitimately shocked that people would actually go through with it which you know fair enough you know it was a little bit of like an experiment sort of thing yeah, yeah. they went through with it and then all of a sudden like um the um is it the oh what is it called what's that uh the washington wall street journal yeah. so the wall street journal uh did this like hit piece on this youtuber and they went through like six months of content of PewDiePie. And every time he made like a very clearly jokey reference to like dictatorships and Nazis and that sort of thing. And then they just made this like two minute video where they took all these clips without explaining the context, like saying, oh, he's clearly, you know, influenced by nazi imagery and it's like no he was making a joke he was trying to prove a point he was like trying to prove how how absurd these companies are who want to make money just like holding up a sign saying something yeah and then that's when this like whole ad apocalypse thing started coming in where like advertisers were a little bit more careful about how much money they invested into youtube and that sort of stuff yeah. And then Logan Paul did this insensitive, ignorant video where he went to the Japanese suicide forest. And I think that was like when the straw broke the camel's back. 
because like no advertiser wants to be involved with content like that completely understandable so you know what can youtube do in that situation the only thing they can do is stop like dishing out money to content that's really not worthy of being monetized in the first place so that's why we've got this policy now where you've got to have a certain amount of subscribers a certain amount of channel views and video views and that sort of thing and like people are still complaining about it and i'm like well if youtube didn't do this you would not be able to upload videos in the first place because they just can't afford without the advertisement to allow people to upload videos to youtube because it's become this like monetary platform when it yeah, when it yeah. first started it was just about people uploading random videos talking about the life every day happening i'm I'm never i'm never going to make a living from it but the the little money that i do get and it is i mean it's completely intense you know hopefully one day that will contribute towards a beer or two if not nothing else um but uh, yeah that's for sort of wanting it to be sort of a a style it's never going to happen well, I know that, and, and I accept it. I I don't buy it. I don't do it for that anyway. Yeah, it, it 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 it's just a strange situation, and a lot of people are really quite uninformed about it. So, like, oh my God, YouTube are taking money away from me, and mm. it's like, well, yeah, because you're not really profitable. At the end of the day, you're not making YouTube money, so why would they continue to put adverts on your video when they're not getting like the rewards from it? But then it brings that point like, well, why are you monetizing your videos in the first place? Why why are you trying to make money yeah. on beer reviews? I, I don't know. But um, yeah, anyway, we we've had a few comments. Okay, well, you you reel them off, mate. I'm gonna go for Jimmy Riddle. Okie dokie. So, uh, carrying on from, um, I don't know, I've, I've lost track of the comments. I apologize. Here we go. Uh, from On the Temps, Chris, his comment was Peter will read the comments soon. Uh, better late than never, I suppose. And then Paul writes, Chocolate Christ. Whatever, Paul, making me knock a fucking glass off my table. It, it's not the fact that I've been drinking most of the day. It's it's purely down to Paul, and the fact that he will anally obliterate me. But um, yeah, so chocolate Christ. Then uh, you at Tekamori says, "Ain't nobody got time for that." No idea what that's in reference to. And uh, Paul says, you better spend all the money I gave you on crazy ass brews. Oh, Paul, I, I will. Don't worry. Or a keg of Jaime, you soy boy. Paul, I'm not wearing the fucking hat, okay? I'm not wearing the fucking hat, so fuck you. I'm not a soy boy if I'm not wearing the hat, so whatever. Uh, then Chris says, I love the sours. Fair enough. Then Tekumo says, "Oh shit, Northern Monk had a couple of had a couple of had a couple at a spot in BCN. Is that Barcelona? Were you in Barcelona, you it? I, I don't know. I know you visited um, Niche in Paris. Uh, he says smashing. And then uh, Paul says, next trend, Imperial Marmalade Brandy Aged Dry Hopped Mild. Bring on those milds. And Sounds great. Milds. Oh, yeah. I'd happily drink that. I'd buy <coughs> multiple bottles of that. That sounds fantastic. And then there's a little bit more banter between uh, a couple of YouTubers. And then Ewart from Tecumori says, been to London wasn't that interesting, Guinness, as I got tangled up and twisted around in Temple Bar. 
Uh, was that when you were paying obscene amounts for the whiskey menu, Hewitt? Because that is one fucking expensive uh, tourist trap in Dublin, is uh, the um, Temple Bar. Rob that, yeah, you're going to pay fucking over the odds in that place, like tenfold. Seriously, it's so expensive. There are so many other great bars and pubs in Dublin. But um, yeah, it, it's a great tourist place, so I can't find yeah. it. I, I think every every big sort of city has that sort of yeah CD part to it. I mean, I'm, I can remember me and the missus. We went we went to Venice for a weekend. Fucking hell, that is one hell of a fucking expensive place. Oh, I can imagine. Twelve euros for two coffees. We, I mean, we, we ended up ordering off the kids' menu. The fucking food was that dear. We thought, I ain't paying that. We, yeah. we were having kids' portions, you know, because I bet they were <laughs> tight fisted bastards. Yeah, but we're, we're good with our money, so um, it makes us look bad when we visit places, but yeah. We're, we're 80 fun. euros for a fucking gondola trip. Stick it up your arse. No, no, no. I'll walk, thanks. Yeah. Uh, then Paul says. Got a four pack of this for twelve bucks. It didn't last long. I'm guessing that's in relation to even more Jesus. What? If if you that's, could get a four pack of that for that's twelve, that's pretty good. That is, yeah. That's that's a, that's a steal. Yeah, I drink that all day. And uh, then Teku Mori says Barcelona, so he was indeed correct. And then. Uh, Tecumori also goes on to say Barcelona equals Bar- BCN equals Barcelona. I don't think Northern Monk is here in Canada. Uh, Chad actually had quite a few Northern Monk um, uh, beers in his unboxing video recently. Uh, they're probably really old cans that have made its way to Canada, but the fact that the is pretty good. And then Kent Beer Reviews, our good friend Craig says, any hangout this evening? Uh, there'll probably be a hangout after this if people are interested. Yeah. Um, I can't yeah. beer, actually, no? Yeah. I mean, uh, I can't review even more Jesus on the channel now. Uh, that's like a proper review because it's all gone because it was that damn drinkable. And then we've got a comment from bong straw great name uh, and if you are sucking on a bong to this fair play to you wherever you are in the world he says lol pa lots hanging around that place i think that's in a response to a comment left by paul saying i want to go to the suicide forest to see if i could pick up a cheap date i might just be hanging around Paul being classy as he ever was. And, and then final comment to end this stream on more for me to choose from. That's from Paul. So uh, yeah, I think Paul's going to Japan after he's been to the UK. <laughs> which uh, be an interesting couple of vlogs. And uh, actually, Ken Beer Reviews saves this chat from being so absurd by saying review the aroma only i tell you what that would be an interesting beer review if you've got an empty glass and you just smell it and yeah. talk about aroma it. in the glass yeah oh, i'm missing it already yeah i'm missing it i tell you what dean that was an absolutely wonderful beer yeah, it really worries, really mate. was no worries until next time oh yes so uh i think i will end this stream there so, as always, a massive, massive, massive thank you to Dean for joining me on this beer review. And, of course, for sending the beers over for us to review in the first place. And uh, do you know what? I can't think of a better beer at this point to celebrate 20 live beer reviews. 20? It only seems like five minutes ago. What was our first ever beer review then? Was it, was it a Beaver Town beer? I think it was. I think... The first time we tried to review beers, we didn't actually go live. So it just ended up being like a, a really good chat between the two. Yeah, yeah. Smog rocket, that rings about. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm sure it was Smog Rocket and um, oh, what's this session pale ale that Beaver do? Uh, Beaver Town do. Oh, um, oh, the neck oil. Neck oil, yeah, yeah. Neck oil. Yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. those beers. Mm. And now we've uh, reviewed even more Jesus. But not to take too much credit away from Siren, who produced a really, really good lager yeah, with uh, maybe, uh, Rooster maybe Tales. Under the shadow of, of Evil Twin in this this particular yeah. hangout, but nevertheless, it's still yeah, both still a decent beer. Very high quality beers. So, um, mm. if anyone has tried these two beers and they'd like to share their thoughts and opinions down below in the comments, uh, I welcome them all. Massive thank you to everyone who actually left comments as we were doing this live. Always great to hear your feedback, even though it takes you about an hour to get back to people. Even longer to actually answer comments on YouTube in general. No. But, um, yeah, a massive thank you to everyone who's taken part in this. Big, big shout out to my good friend Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews. If you haven't done so already, his links are already in the description box down below fantastic guy and uh yeah everyone who's watched this absolutely awesome everyone who watches this after it's gone live you're awesome too and uh yeah look forward to live review 21 because I'm, i've got a feeling we're going to be doing this for quite a while now yeah it's here to stay oh yes so thank you guys for watching check out dean look forward to the next live review and uh hopefully you'll join join us for that live review Anyway, thanks guys, and I shall see you all later. Cheers.